It's like, yo, like, okay, you, you have data. And then even some of the data is like, 50% of marriages end in divorce? It's like, did, have we not looked up the, some of the most recent data? It's just like, everything is biased, but it's biased to not lead to long-term success. And if we're honest about long-term success, a lot of this information is not it. I got a question for you. Do, do you have car insurance? 100%. I know where you're All right, going. Do you have homeowners insurance? 100%. Do you have life insurance? 100%. Do you have medical insurance? 100%. Uh, did you get tired of your insurance agent talking about the possibilities of you losing your life and but, being rewarded? Wait, you, hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Ask, I know, but, but, but that, don't be a butt person. Here's the deal. Here's questions. the deal. Here's the deal. You What's up, everybody? Bernard Riley here. Today, we're going to be talking about the somewhat heated debate between Coach Greg Adams and Hafez from The Roommate. So come on in, strap on in, hit the like button. Let's get ready to go. Let's get it. You're talking right. about a prenup. You're talking about a set of rules, guidelines. What's what's this leverage you're referring well, to? Well, a lot of men, um, you know, a lot of men are looking to be loved, right? So a lot of men, uh, the, 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 the transaction is always men give, men, women receive. So in this instance, once men do a lot of giving, they may sacrifice, they may risk things, but they're risking the little things that they have. They don't, they don't know what they're going to lose in the future, right? So by that point, they will probably avoid a prenup. They might say, I don't need a prenup. I don't have anything, mm -hmm. right? And so he'll get married. He'll build some things. Once the commitment is made and once the investment is made, then he has something. So then when they say, but well, you better love her, right? You better screw her, right? You better appreciate her, right? And he says, well, she is still not working. She's not happy. Well, then he knows me he can measure how much mm -hmm. he's going to lose because he now has leverage, but the leverage is attached to a marital contract. And then at that point, he can say, well, I don't want to lose my two or three kids. I don't want to lose my house. I don't want to lose my car. He knows then. And also he has no protection. He didn't get a prenup because he didn't have leverage. This is what a lot of young men in their 20s don't understand because they don't know what they're going to lose. They can't measure it. Once you're 40 and you've accumulated things and you have leverage, you have position mm -hmm. at a company and a woman says, hey, I want to marry you and you will know what you're going to lose. And at that point, you can make a conscious decision whether they engage in a state funded marital contract. Yeah. That's leverage. Most men get married without the leverage. Right. Did you have a and this is why when you were talking about the idea of like when men fail in marriage, they lose everything. That's wrong. No, I didn't say they lose everything. But they lose an awful lot. The, the stop. That's, that's well, still wrong. But why is it wrong? Because, I mean, let me tell you why. Because when men lose at anything in life, they lose a lot. You lose your job. Who's gonna come save you? Who if you if you if, if you if you screw your friends over? Like as a man, that's the name of the game. You lose, you're gonna lose a lot. You fail, you're gonna fail a lot. So I'm not saying that it's wrong, like marriage doesn't count. I'm saying marriage is a part of all the things as a man where you cannot get wrong, which is why I agree with the message that you're giving at times. That's why you gotta be 100% serious. Okay, that argument really isn't even an argument. He's basically just saying that if you lose, then you lose. If the argument does not address the probability of winning or the probability of losing, and the fact that the probability of losing is higher and the reason that the problems uh, legally, structurally and culturally, why that probability is higher. If that's not being addressed, then what you're essentially saying is that, yes, it's bad. Yes, there's a possibility, a, a probability of you losing. Guess what? Do it anyway. Dive on the grenade. That's essentially what you're saying. And I understand that there's a such thing as an argument that men do need to dive on certain grenades. And I mean, that's what men do. And we protect and we build and we do all of this. I understand all that. And I get it. But what's the cost benefit analysis of, analysis of playing this game? If you're, not, if you're not truly adequately addressing that, then I think you're not really making an argument to begin with. Before we got married, we talked about everything. So Every single scenario, every single thing. Me, I'm not a money guy. I'm not. I'm not motivated by money. So therefore, the money, like I'm different. Everyone knows me. I'm not a money guy. So you can have all the money. I have my brain. Mm -hmm. I can start from ground zero. I'll build the money back up. I don't mind money. But to me, money because end of the day, like I said, we can talk about that later. But so to me, I, in regards to losing money, I don't care about losing money. Take whatever you want. If worst case scenario things happen. 
Again, that is not an acceptable argument to just simply say, well, you personally don't care about the thing that men pretty much care the most about losing. Other than the kids, I would say losing all your money, all your resources, that is a pretty big thing that men care about losing. So to simply say you don't care about that, therefore you guys should do it anyway because I don't care about it. That's not an acceptable argument. That's basically saying there is no argument. And even if somebody tried to argue that the marriage laws are gender neutral, we know that on average, women that make a whole lot of money are not going to marry a guy that makes significantly less. And they're not going into the marriages thinking that they're going to be the ones working hard and building and doing all of this. And then and, and the guy is going to take half from them. It could happen. But in most cases, it's the guys doing that hard work, that heavy labor, that heavy lifting. And then they grow to a certain point and then for frivolous reasons no fault divorce blah 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 that woman could end up screwing the guy's life over and taking his kids and taking the money so it's not an acceptable argument to say i don't care about the money i can make more money it goes back to what i said at the beginning that his argument the case that he's making for marriage and that's what he was doing in his show trying to make a case for marriage and the case that he was essentially making was a case that more or less pretty much just said yeah it's bad do it anyway aka she screwed up and he can get up out of there mm -hmm. and he can use that as leverage to make sure he doesn't lose time with his kids then he'll pull the trigger yeah got it okay yeah. um go ahead a feast yeah um i, I want to take a little differently because there's nothing that i'm going to add to that coach greg, Ad greg adams hasn't shared i think i agree with the third one may may hit or miss but here's here's what here's the nuance i think is lacking in the conversation especially the young guys who kind of consume this kind of content there's always truths in what people say like you, you say a lot of things that are true, but if you end the sentence there, it's not going to benefit people's lives. And so to me, I think one of the, the fundamental challenges is when you, when you come at things. Wait, if what he said was true and it was accurate and people take heed to the advice, it will benefit their lives. So you can't say that it's true. You can't say that what he's saying is true, but then turn around and then say, the truth is not going to benefit them. How am I supposed to interpret that any, as any other way as him basically saying, ignore the truth. Unless of course he can offer something that refutes what coach Greg Adams says. And then once you can offer something that refutes that, then you can build up an argument that could possibly stand as the truth. And I'm okay with that. That's fine. But it's a deflection argument to basically say, yeah, that's true, but it's not going to benefit people's lives if they consume that content. They need to hear something else. Well, is that something else true? And if that something else contradicts something that you just said was the truth, then, 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 then by what standard are you saying that that's the truth? Then you're basically de facto admitting that what you're about to say is, is a lie or not truth or just some cross your fingers and hope information. Like that's the state of it. That's the state of it. But if, if your argument is, yes, it's bad. Yes, you could get screwed over. Yes, with these modern women and modern laws and this modern culture and modern society and modern everything, if we want families, you just have to do it. You just have to fall on the sword. You just have to yield. You just have to submit to that. You just have to go and sign a state a, a state sanctioned legally binding document and take the risk. I know some people that say that. And they they stand in it. They look right in the camera and say that yes, men are supposed to take that risk and fall on that sword. If that's what you're saying, I, I to some degree I can respect that because that's basically saying no. I can't refute anything that he's saying. I just think as men we should do it anyway. That's not a satisfying argument, but at least then you're you're standing in the truth if you're saying that. I was telling us every single worst case scenario, and he's only touching the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg of all the stories he's heard. There's enough information about the worst case scenario about marriage, about divorce. Oh, oh, she left me, and there's enough of that in this world. And so my biggest thing is that how does that make society better? Especially, I'm passionate about it. Going back to like black community, the biggest issue that's plaguing the black community when I ask Candace Owens on the right, if you can ask uh, Dr. Eric Dice on the left, they'll tell you it's fatherlessness, mm -hmm. broken families, 
Not enough husbands and wives coming together, raising families. That's what's, destro- that's what's destroying the black community. That's what I'm passionate about. And so to me, the biggest thing is how it, how is simply spending all day, keyword all day, majority of my day, hearing about the worst case scenario about marriage and divorce and alimony and getting screwed over. How is that going to help black men become better fathers? How is that going to help them become better husbands? How, how is that going to equip them? with the tools needed to build healthy families and to create legacies of change. And so to me, that's all right. Now he's speaking my language. He's speaking my language from this perspective. Hear me out. I do want to see more families in the black community. I do want to see more black families. I do believe that functional families is a good thing and better for society. So in that sense, He's speaking my language, but where he made one of the most blue pill statements ever is simply saying that when he talked about, okay, how was, how was consuming this information going to make them better husbands? How's it going to make them better fathers? How is it going to make them better this? How's it going to make them better that? That is the epitome of blue pill of being blue pill. When you say, just be better and then it'll all work out. Just, just, just be a better, he's he basically just making the alpha your way through it argument. That, that is, that is textbook alpha your way through it. Just do better. Yes. There's an 80% divorce rate. Yes. It's high. He, he agreed with a lot of things that coach Greg Adams said. So he's saying that yes, it's bad. Yes. The, 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 the laws are slanted. Yes, 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 yes. All of that. Just tap dance harder. And then she won't do a, B and C. Listen, if the if the man, as I said plenty of times, the only way that a man can truly have a family is he has to be attached to a woman. There are exceptions to the rules, but typically if a man wants to start a family, he has to be attached to a woman. A woman in her mind today, she could have a family without being attached to a man. She could divorce him. She could just get pregnant. She could just do what, pretty much what she want to do and have her own kids and her own thing because the kids technically belong to her especially if there was never a marriage but even after a marriage the kids ends up ends up belonging to her and you get an uncle dad schedule that's typically how it plays out you take all that and you add in no fault divorce and all the other things and then yeah it's it's the the ball the ball is in her court the leverage is in her hand as coach coach greg adams was saying she has the leverage in that situation so basically what is all is going to come down to is he's making the argument, you know, about not fixing the laws, not fixing the culture, not fixing anything. He's saying we need more black families, black men and black women coming together and staying together while you're barking up the wrong tree if the women are the ones fouling these divorces. And even if you went down that road of trying to say, well, why are they fouling the divorces? You're still going to run into a problem with that because when they talk about cheating and abuse and this or that or blah, 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 uh, you know, we got, we know the data that women cheat just as much as men. We know that it, especially with black women, they just as abusive as a man. And in some cases, depending on how you look at the data, I've done content on this. They're more abusive. They're just as likely to be doing all of that. And if you say that finances is a reason, okay, two people put their money together. Most women have to work in a marriage anyway. Nowadays, that's what they want is two people can put their money together and then make a decent salary together. So I don't even buy that as a legitimate value, uh, you know, acceptable reason as to why they're following these divorces at an 80% rate. If they're following these divorces at 80% rate, you have to concede the simple fact that they don't want to be married as much as they say they want to be married. So berating the men about how we need more families, more coming together, more this, more that, is, uh, to me, that's barking up the wrong tree. There's clearly something wrong or something different in the women where, where less, less men want to marry them and it's something different in, in the women to where they're less likely to stay married. That's what it is. But I'm going to stop it right there. I'm going to have to do a live stream on this because there was a lot to this. And I only got to a very small percentage of what I wanted to get into. I may do a follow-up part two video on this or I'll do a live stream. But either way it go, thank you for listening. Make sure you hit the like button, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And with that said, we are out of here. Peace. We gone.